you know, give an extended thank you. I want to give a, 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 a good thank you to the MUIG team yeah, for allowing us to share what we preach, right? Um, again, you know, like what Crystal said, we, our goal is to empower people, right? Because we believe that everyone deserves a multi-million dollar portfolio. Yep. Um, that's our mission, actually, right? To get everyone belongs to, a, uh, a, to have a million dollar portfolio. So my name is Warren Howe. I'm what they call the FY investor. I'll talk a little bit about what is FY later. And I founded this company two years ago, right? With Shafiq. Uh, just a little bit about myself. I, I previously, uh, I was from the real estate development industry. Yep, it's a family business. I took a huge step, you know, coming out, doing things myself because this is my passion. Yep, investing is my passion. Um, I went through ups and downs and uh, I have a diversified asset portfolio end of the day. Yep. So my partner, he'll be introducing himself later on. His name is Shafiq. He's the FY trader, right? We are both full-time. So this gives us an, an edge, right? In the market. So, you know, today we're going to discuss about decoding the US market, right? The, the US stock market. Um, and, you know, just again, guys, uh, we'll be very appreciative. If you want to be following our updates, right? Following, know, know, knowing more about us, what do we do? What do we preach? Um, follow us on our channels, right? We, we recently just started off YouTube. We'll be more active there, right? So do subscribe, you know, hopefully you can follow us. It's all down there. Instagram, Facebook, StockBit. We'll talk a little bit about that later too. And Telegram, okay? Awesome. Now, <clears throat> my first question to you guys, right? Is um, because you, we're talking about decoding the US market, right? But first of all, have, who here has been to the US? Anyone here been to the US? No, no one has been in the US. Okay, it's fine. So uh, yeah, just warming up with the, the crowd, right? Warming up, warming up with the crowd. Uh, why am I asking this question? Is because, you know, end of the day, being somewhere, right? If you are interested in the US market, if you are interested to invest in the US itself, then obviously it's better to go there, right? To meet companies, to meet the management if you can. You know, this is what I've been doing ever since uh, I went there for honeymoon two years ago. Right. So why is this called the land of opportunity? And do you guys know what, uh, you know, this city is? This is New York City, right? Beautiful, beautiful place. Why is it called land of opportunity? And you always see that in the media, right? You always see um, movies talking about this, right? America is the land of opportunity. I totally agree. But then again, not neglecting the side that everywhere there's opportunities, but I, this is a market where I see evergreen. This is a market where I really I'm familiar with. It's evergreen. It's growth, right? There's there's a secret sauce. Later we'll talk about that. But you know, this is what I deem that uh, you know is is amazing place, right? And they have a famous you know uh, bull, right? Charging bull in Wall Street. This is what they call it. <clears throat> so this is just a little picture of me and my wife, right? This is where I gained, you know, 15 kg heavier, but my, and my wallet was a little lighter, right? Going to the US. For Malaysians, to go to the US is, is actually a privilege. Right? I'm very lucky to be going there. And this is just me and my wife in, you know, Las Vegas. We went east side, west side, you know, that's what it is. Um, you know, and um, do you know about the charging bull, by the way, guys, in Wall Street? Because in US, there's a huge bull. There's a huge monument, right? Ever since the 1970s, 80s. But in Malaysia, if you, have you guys been here? So this is in Pudu. Um, this is the Bursa Malaysia building. I always make fun of this during my sessions, right? So we provide courses, we provide sessions. And I always make fun of this is because Malaysia is like sort of backwards. Uh, and for those of you that are new to the stock market, why is it called a bull run? Because, you know, when you think about bull, uh, the bull attacks upwards, right? So bull means green, okay? When you think about the bear, the bear attacks downwards, so bear means red, right? Down. So bear market is down, bull market is up. But I always make fun of this is because, you know, bull, this bull is dying. <laughs> so it's more like the charging bear and the dying bull in Fall Street, lah, okay? What's I call, what I call it. Um, yeah, so this is Malaysia. <clears throat> but when I, let's talk about the US market, guys. When I look at the US market, I, I think about this, okay? I look at, I, I see in a better lens, right? I see an overall, you know, or overall point of view and a holistic view. This is what I see. And because there's plenty, plenty of opportunities, right? But again, guys, who here in, uh, actually invest in the stock market? Anyone here? Can type a one or can type a me if you invest in the stock market? You guys? Okay, awesome. That's great. How about the US stock market? Anyone here? Lim, Crystal, Nilesh. Okay. 
well, not as many as how many is in the market, right? But okay, that's great. So um, why, why the US market? Okay, so today we're going to talk about that, right? We're going to decode it. When I look at the US market, again, I think of this. It's like a, you know, it's a future of endless possibilities, definitely. Why? Because of they have a secret sauce. Do you notice that uh, obviously they are a developed country compared to other countries in Asia? They have uh, innovation, right? The management there, the, the way they think, the way they want to grow companies, this is a huge factor when we want to even put a little bit of money into that company. Does that make sense? Because sad to say, right, I'm Malaysian. Sad to say, Malaysian companies and the way people think in management, right, it's all about, no, I'm not, not a majority. I can't speak for everyone. It's not fair. But a majority of them are, you know, palm and dumb, where they want to go, we always hear the term, right, go rank the stocks. So, you know, new, new PM is here. What's going to happen? Uh, <laughs> I'm no related company is going to go rank. What I'm trying to say is that we, it's good to be riding the trend if you're a you know, trader and all. But that is something that is lacking. Okay? Technology is lacking. Population growth is lacking. Uh, innovation, right? Inflation is not as high. Well, some sort of. Th these are the factors that are the reasons why the stock market has, is always going up, up, up. Okay? So when I look at US market, it's like stepping into a new world, right? Back then, in seven, year, seven years ago, when I you know, didn't even think about investing in the US market, I, I don't know why also, right? <laughs> so Warren Buffett started when he was 11 years old and he said that, you know, before that, he's wasted his life. I started at what, 18? Which is crazy, right? What I'm saying, I, 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 I should have started earlier. But what I'm trying to say is that when I think about the US market, I'm stepping in a new world. Right? I'm stepping in a new market. There's new possibilities for sure. And if you do not you know, have the same vision as me on the US market, that's fine. You can treat it as a new means of diversification. If you have you know, hands on Malaysian companies, whether it's gloves, whether it's you know, tech stocks, whatever it is, we could diversify. Right? And if you, if you can see what I see, if you can venture into this, you know, the US stock market, <clears throat> simply because, you know, Gen Z, millennials, right? They are getting influenced from the media. The new ways of consumption is increasing, right? It's changing. It's ever-changing, okay? In fact, guys, the future is faster than we think. What does that mean? It means that 3D printed homes are getting more and more possible. It, uh, do you guys, are you guys Tesla fans? Who are Tesla fans here? By the way, I'm a huge Tesla bull, but I'm not trying to say go in on Tesla. Did you guys, you know, see the recent announcement on Elon's uh, AI day, right? Robots are coming, guys. Terminator is coming. Uh, <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is that they are even at that level where they're going to touch on an AI. Now, they say that 2022, but I think I call that bullshit. It's just that the future is really faster than we think. Because, you know, everything that we know that is possible from flying cars and all that, it's going to be there eventually. But the, the bad thing is that we will be in a position of weakness if we do not grab the opportunities like yesterday. Does that make sense? Right? So treat it as a means of diversification. I used to have 15% of my net worth in the US, right? Years ago. That 15% grew to 50 to 60% of my whole, my whole net worth, guys. Okay? And this is another sort of financial planning. I noticed some psychology students here. Hopefully, you guys are in a position of power to, you know, have that financial standing, right? What does that mean? Financial goals, right? Tracking down your net worth because everything is interrelated, right? So, yeah, more about that later. <clears throat> so, to get into this market, we need to know the characteristics of the US market. We need to know whether or not we can stomach volatility, right? Because end of the day, it's a bigger market. It's more liquid, right? It is... Is it can be as volatile or even more volatile than Malaysian markets, right? Malaysian stock markets. So for those of you that are investing in the market, I think it's uh, Malaysian stock market. We need to, you know, if you want to dive into this market, we have to know, okay, what is the beta? What is the volatility of per stock, right? Does it go down drastically? For let's say Palantir, let's say. Have you guys heard of Palantir? Let me know. Palantir, volatile. After earnings, right? It could go down 20%, 15% or vice versa, right? It could go the opposite way. 15% up, 20% up. Yeah, we need to know if we want to be, right, whether or not we can stomach it, right? Number two is that we need to know the consumers, right? A quick example, Quilos, okay? They love their on-the-go food. They love their frozen food, right? Western, Western people, Europe, America, 
So when you, when you know about this, you can sort of capitalize on that, right? What are on-the-go frozen food companies? You know? So this is the trend and we can actually read seasonality, right? Summer was there. What do they drink during summertime? Hot seltzers, right? Uh, what are the beers do they like? Yeah? Um, th these are trends that we need to pick up on. And knowing that, you know, for me, it's easier because I study more in the US market. These are sort of trends to actually strategize on, okay, what could I capitalize on, on the type of investments? Yep. So I hope this makes sense. Um, you got any questions, just let me know. And, you know, and they're innovative in nature. Okay. When you think about technology, where's number one? Obviously, it's within these countries. Japan, Korea, US, for sure. Right? So when you think about innovation, innovation improves the, 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 the nature of lives. Our mortality rate is actually increasing. We're dying at an older age, right? It's because of technology. So if we're investing in companies and countries like that, how do you think our investments will be for our kids, right? Have that mindset. So innovative in nature and always improving. This is definitely their characteristic, right? Especially the management because it's the people who's running that. Yeah. So again, here's just some quick snippets on why should we invest in the US market? And these are things that I preach, right? During our courses, these are things that we preach. So most successful global companies, obviously. Duh, right? We are using them. We are literally consuming them here in this part of the world. Why are they successful? They have growth potential, right? The product market fit is there. It makes so much sense. They're innovative. They're still improving. They're capturing us, right? We, the, 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 the loyalty on the brand, we don't mind to spend, even if they mark up 15%, we don't mind. Take my money, right? This is, these are traits of a good you know, company. Higher volume or liquidity for both stocks and options. What does that mean? It means that we are not afraid of us, like not, you know, of us not selling our shares. We buy a particular share, even if it's a small cap, mid cap, it's okay because it's highly volatile. It's a huge market. There are traders everywhere. We are not afraid that you know, it, can, it, it will not be sold. Yeah, very high volume. So it could work good ways. It could work bad ways, right? High volume, meaning that it's drastic um, either way, right? Uh, down and up. Yeah, better coverage on online research and materials. Guys, in Malaysia, right, when you want to be researching like a sort of a demography on a particular state or city like Sungai Buloh, I, was, I, was, I remember this because, you know, back in the or real estate development days, I was actually researching what is the population uh, before we sort of bought the land in Sungai Buloh. And, you know, the dates are tracking back all the way to 2015. I'm like, wait, what? What? <laughs> Why? Why is it like that? You know? So what I'm trying to say is that the coverage online, media, the way, you know, the, 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 the sufficiency of, uh, the efficiency of research from, you know, Malaysians, sad to say, is not there, right? But on the other hand, we can know as, mu as much as what, you know, locals know in US, right? I got US friends. I always communicate with them. I mean, the, the way research and media co is covering on companies, right? And uh, all the events, it's so up to date. So this is, I mean, this is the reason why. And not only tracking that, guys, since you guys are in the stock market, who of you, uh, you know, how many of you actually listen to conference calls, right, in, in, in Malaysia? Do you guys listen to conference calls? Do you go into, you know, Daniel says, Elon for the win. Right there with you, man. Yeah, do you guys live in a you listen to conference calls or quarter calls or, you know, um, investor presentations? Do you guys listen to that? No? No one here? Okay, Nilesh says yes. Okay, if you're an investor, guys, please, please look into them, okay? <laughs> because you want to know what's happening, right? You want to know how the management talks. How do they, you know, what do they preach? What do they promise to investors? Are they just milking us, right? So why am I giving out this uh, example? Is because, very simple, very simple. When you go to a conference call, number one in Malaysia, okay? Number one is that you have to be sort of connected to be even participating in the fucking, you know, conference call. That's what pisses me off, right? We need to know the right connections, right? Investor relations, okay? Or any other party that is close to the management, they only we can attend. But what, what nonsense is that? Come on, right? And it's not even recorded. We need to have connections to have those recordings. Do you guys know that? If you didn't, that's how it is, okay? So Stockbit, which is a platform, you know, founded by my friend, is bridging that gap from retailers, making easy access for retailers to, you know, uh, we are also on Stockbit followers, guys, but yeah, bridging that, that access. But in US, all you got to do is just subscribe to Seeking Alpha, okay? Seeking Alpha, by the way, is a website. Do check it out. 
you, I mean, you have to pay uh, to hear the conference call, right? Other than that, you read. So I pay, right? Because I, I invest, okay? I invest in myself. I invest in resources to make my investment decisions better. So I pay like a yearly subscription. I can listen to the earnings call transcript. We, I don't have to be like a special, you know, member, although I'm a shareholder, but you, th does that make sense, guys? This is the huge difference, the inefficiency of these companies. I mean, for the, on these two, you know, sort of uh, characteristics of the market, it's insane, okay? It's insane. Now, huge market capitalization to reduce market manipulation. We're a big market. I mean, US now. Don't even think about effing around in, you know, the US market. Tight laws, they got layers and layers of laws, okay? If it doesn't go through SC, sorry, SEC, you go through the feds, okay? There's huge, huge layers of laws. You don't want to F around, right? Wolf of Wall Street, perfect example. Have you guys watched Wolf of Wall Street, by the way? Awesome movie, check it out. But in Malaysia, what do we have? We got people like Karim, you know, doing things that he likes. You know, I, I, I'm pissed off because I was the one that's very bullish on, you know, Karim counters. Do you, know, do you guys know Karim? I mean... Uh, K Power has CIB. If you guys are in the market, you'll know, okay? But <laughs> I don't want to be bitching about him too much. But then again, this is what it is, yeah? What I'm trying to paint the picture is that Apple's market cap is $2 trillion today. Market cap, market value. The whole of Malaysia market cap, less than 500 billion. You see how small we are, right? So this is in context, yeah? <clears throat> the US market is the key mover for the rest of the world. There's a saying, Right? If the US sneezes, the world catches a cold. They're doing a lot of, you know, imports, exports with a lot of countries, right? Doing a lot of deals, right? They even have debts, obviously. A lot of countries like Japan have a lot of debt. They're holding a lot of bonds from US. What I'm trying to say here is that there's a huge influence. Whatever happening to the US market will most probably affect all, you know, other markets. Yep. <clears throat> and Securities Commission are very, very tight on transparency. Okay, so this is why the US market. Yeah, and again, another context of US versus Malaysia. This is what I think of when I look at the police. Now, don't get me wrong, guys. I'm not, you know, into strong men, but this is like just a funny thing that I was searching while doing these slides, right? So, the Malaysian police is here, US police is here. Same thing when it goes to companies, for me, at least, right? When I think about companies, growth companies, stronger companies, buffer companies versus, you know, Pisang goreng eating, you know, companies, right? That's what I think. And just a fun fact, right? Luke Skywalker, uh, because we're talking about US and Malaysia, uh, he mistaken the Malaysia flag with the US flag and he got a lot of Malaysian followers after that. So this is just a fun fact, right? Luke Skywalker, Mark, <clears throat> Mark Hamill. Anyway, <clears throat> this is the reason why, the ultimate reason why I invest in the US market. Okay. Uh, do you guys know what's S&P 500, guys? Anyone here? S&P 500? No? Yes, 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 yes. Wow, a lot of people coming in. Okay, great. Wow. Okay, awesome. Thanks. So the S&P 500, in case you guys don't know, is basically an index, tracking down 500 of the largest companies in the world, specifically in the US, right? An index is a statistical measurement of the average market value of all these companies. So this represents the market. And if the market goes down, most likely other markets will follow. This here is a comparison between the S&P 500 with KLCI, our miserable, you know, Malaysian index, comprising only of 30 companies. So it's not a, an exact representation of the whole market, right? We got to use a lot of things. But fun fact here again, is that the S&P 500 is nearly half of the world's market cap. Do you guys know that? These are some, things that we, these are some of the things that we reveal during our empowerment courses. Lah. But, you know, when we look at this, okay, what it tells me is that Whenever there's a bear, that whenever there's a bear market, the bull always climbs up. Bear market, bull. Bear market, bull, right? But now, do not just like blindly follow and invest just because of this, but there are reasons why the market is like that, okay? But have another context, have another perspective. 500 companies, am I taking too long? Oh my God. 500 companies uh, market cap, is actually growing, 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 growing over the years since 1983, right? Growing 3,005% compared to KLCI 314%. That means 500 of these market value of these companies are actually growing in tandem. So why aren't we investing in the US market? It's insane, guys. And have you ever thought about this? People are losing money ever since 1983, 
still complaining about the stock market. All we have to do, a one-night donkey, guys, can put their money in the SP 500 and be making money and laughing in the bank until today. Does that make sense? It's as simple as that. Now, we can't buy the SP 500 straight away. We have to buy an ETF, Exchange Traded Fund, right? That tracks down this index. Yeah? So, I'm going to quicken my pace because I took too much time. Sorry. <laughs> so, the SP 500 has the secret sauce. What is the secret sauce? Growth, innovation, everything that we mentioned just now. Market cap of 500 companies' growth is exponential, right? Many opportunities. And, and seriously, half of the S&P 500 companies might not even be great quality companies. They might be trash. We, all we need to do is just filter it from there. And what works for us, right? Is it within your competence? Is it a high quality company? That's all we got to do, right? And we notice that, again, US market, they are comprised of market leaders. They set the price. Again, brand loyalty, right? They can charge 20% premium compared to others and people will still be paying their money. These are characteristics, okay? <clears throat> now, if you guys, I mentioned stock bid just now, right? Follow my stock bid, guys. Follow our stock bid, follow our channels. You can actually see what we preach because I wrote like, a, I mean, quite a good article because uh, I, I wrote that, you know, from 10,000 to 21 million. This is what we, we could have this. We could have a 212,000% in a 70-year period just by reinvesting the dividends that we get from the S&P 500. And in the, in, the, in the post, I mentioned all the details. Why is the S&P 500 going up? Inflation, population growth, um, innovation, right? They have a secret sauce, everything, right? Check out the post. Um, let us, I mean, communicate with us if you want to know more, but obviously you can check it out, right? 212,000 percent that's insane. All we have to do is just stick onto one investment, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, right? Reinvesting the dividends that we get. Guys, that's insane, okay? And it gives a perspective that in a, within a 70-year period, we're getting a KGAR, a compounded annual growth rate of 11.4 percent versus an inflation of 7 percent. So people, you know, this, this sort of uh, apps our mind up, right? People have been talking inflation 2.5%. No. Okay, 70-year period, inflation 7%. All we got to do is just get awesome investments to beat that. We will be on to our, what I call FU money, right? Fuck you money, meaning retirement money. Sorry, I, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to swear, but uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Anyway, so this is an example of Amazon. Okay, Amazon, 20 years ago, you put in 10,000. To, uh, and you own at 20 bucks, you own 500 shares. Today, that NAV, the net asset value, 1.7 mil. Easier said than done, right? But then again, we could question ourselves now or yesterday. Are we investing in a quality business? Is the management good? Do they have the secret sauce? What are they preaching? Is there good growth in their product market fit, right? Do they even have a product market fit? Are they, you know, benefiting ways of the new consumption, right? Think about what I said just now. Future is faster than we think, right? Are they innovative? Do they have strong belief in a, in a good direction? Are they painting a strong direction, right? Back in the day. I mean, seriously, last time, Jeff Bezos, he told people that he would be the biggest online bookstore in the world. Where are they now, right? So why aren't we investing in the Elons in our world? Why aren't we investing in the Jeff Bezos in our world? Does that make sense? So this is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. The next question is, which company will be the next Amazon? Well, if you want to find out together, then, you know, um, join, come join for Academy, right? <laughs> That's the thing. And the most important thing, guys, is are we spotting them today? Seriously, are you spotting them today? Because we got to be in position of power constantly. People talk about, you know, retirement money. Yeah, they just talk like that, but they don't do anything. That's, that's what pisses me off. Right? So that's, we got to change that, right? We got to change that. We got to, we got to be in position of power. We want to spot them today, spot good investments. We're going to learn how, right? Invest in ourselves and whatnot. Another company is Monster, Monster Energy, right? Have you guys heard of this before? <clears throat> Another fun fact is that this is one of the best performing companies in the whole US market in a, you know, 15 year time frame, right? 17 years ago, you put 10,000, owning at 18 cents, 55,000 shares. Fast forward today, you already got your FU money right? 5.4 mil. So these are sort of motivations on not only holding long-term, but identifying great companies that can potentially grow. Now, again, we have to ask ourselves, right? Quality business, good management before we buy. Again, the next question is which company will be the next monster and are we spotting them today? We personally know both a potential beverage company and a frozen food company that has growth potential, right? If you want to know more, you can chat with us. Yep. Yeah? 
So <clears throat> when we talk about stock price, okay, and buying units of stock, especially in the US market, the, for those you know, that are new to the US stock market, the beauty about this is you can buy one single share. You can buy one single share of Amazon, which is 3,005 USD. I mean, you have to be a little, you, you, need to, you need to have a little bit more money because it will take like, I don't know, 15K ringgit to buy one. But the beauty of it is, is that everything is in percentage. Don't think that, okay, you know what, I, I need a high, uh, and other than that, we can buy fractional shares. Yep, in IBKR, which is a um, brokerage platform, interactive brokers, we can buy fractional shares. Um, I, I use IBKR mostly, right? But other, other, like I think eToro as well, we can actually buy fractional shares also. So this is the benefit, right? <clears throat> um, and, you know, when we talk about brokerages, if we put our money in sort of foreign brokerages, especially US brokerages, the brokerage fee commission is much cheaper because it's just one USD per share. Now, last time IBKR had sort of a penalty of uh, 10 bucks per month, but they already waived that. It's crazy not to use that platform, right? Every trade, one USD. <clears throat> but in Malaysian platforms, if you want to be buying US companies, we need to pay a minimum of 25 bucks per trade. So, I mean, to me, it's a no-brainer, right? We don't have to pay any special fees to open IBKR accounts. All we got to do is just be more liquid to them. That's how they earn money. I mean, those are real benefits, right? <clears throat> and in the Malaysian stock market, we have to buy a minimum of 100 units, right? In case you guys didn't know, yeah? So, but this is a multiples, one lot equals 100 units, yeah? So, this is the, the basics of uh, buying a share, um, especially in US. And, and you know, when we, look, when we talk about US market, we talk about US stocks, you can see like some stocks are like 3,005, 40,000. Guys, do you know Berkshire Hathaway, which is uh, Warren Buffett's company? Do you guys know how much is, you know, per share? Class A shares, do you know? No one knows? You can Google it up. I think it's now like, what, 235,000 per share? Yeah, it's insane. 235,000, that means you have to be a multi-millionaire to own one share. Insane, right? <laughs> so why is that? Why is that? Because the number of outstanding shares in the market is lesser. Yep, a stock price... Uh, how do we get the stock price? Basically, you know, market price times by the total number of outstanding shares. So that means the, the number of shares they release to the market is less. So it's, you know, sort of secluded. They times by the market value per share, you get 235. But, and, and their market cap is only, let's say, 600 billion compared to, a, you know, Microsoft, which is 1.5 trillion, or I think it's close to 2 trillion. I haven't updated for some time. Their price per share is only 300 bucks, 200 bucks, right? So it's because of the number of shares. So don't get, you know, sort of panic because of that, you know, that single unit of share. But we, number one, we can buy fractional shares. Number two is that we have to understand why. Why is it like that, right? So, I mean, th th these are some basics of buying units of stock. Yeah. So for beginners to start a journey into the US market, basically, uh, you know, not neglecting all that we have talked about, right? Innovation, Secret sauce, growth potential. The keyword here, guys, capital G, growth. Okay? So take note of if you want to venture in the US market, foreign, Forex has changed, right? This could be double its sword because uh, if you be, you know, when you are putting in the, uh, your money to, to change to Forex, when ringgit strengthens, then obviously um, it'll be good and bad, right? Depending on the currency. Uh, so take note of this Forex exchange, right? But I mean, seriously, the better question should be how, what is the, um, which currency should we be holding our money on longer term, right? I'm not going to be holding ringgit long term, okay? Especially what's happening in the markets. I'm going to be holding USD or probably even renminbi, right? But again, don't just follow me. Do your own duty and, uh, you know, have your own convictions, right? So it might be good and bad due to fluctuations. So you need to take note of that. Investing is all about percentage. Don't think that, okay, you know what? USD, higher Forex, I'm not going to put my money there. No, you put 10K ringgit worth, you grow that money to 100K, it's the same thing. Same thing as Malaysia. Same thing as Hong Kong, right? All you got to do is just factor in, obviously, Forex exchange and commission fees, but the, 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 the surplus, you know, the increase or decrease is just based on percentage, okay? So the question is, is this a better company? Seriously, we don't really talk about a lot of uh, like small ADBD things, right? We talk about the bigger picture. Is this a better company for growth 10 years from now? Now, you guys are, you guys are investing in... <clears throat> Stock market, right? I, I assume it's all Malaysian. If the question we should be asking ourselves is that <clears throat> the the companies that we have right now, 
does it have good 10, you know, 10 year growth potential? What I like to think is that, am I holding these companies for my kids? And they are definitely companies in Malaysia, but it's just that what are our conviction levels, our confidence levels on other companies? Not only on the US, right? From Hong Kong, from China, whatever it is. But this is what I see when I talk about the US market. Yeah, always ask yourself that, right? Higher convictions. Because the more we are convicted, the more money we dump into that market or any particular stock to grow our wealth, right? This, this is what Fucademy is all about. Okay, so there's cheaper brokerage, obviously, and more efficient and better analytics. I do not know how to stress this enough, guys. This is a snapshot of our public account that we reveal to the public, right? <clears throat> so interactive brokers, they actually can, like if you go to the portfolio checkup you know, page, they actually can actually filter for you, okay, the max drawdown, the Sharpie ratio, right? In comparison, what are the gains in comparison with S&P 500, ARK Invest, you guys know what's ARK Invest? Let me know. Um, yeah, all these, yeah? And they even track down what are, you know, the percentage of, you know, equities, real estate. Real estate is not, doesn't mean that I'm investing in a real estate there. It means that I'm investing in a real estate related company. That's why, right? And they even have sort of a sector, you know, breakdown. Consumer cyclicals, 56%. Non-cyclicals, how many? Healthcare, like sector allocation, they can actually tell whether I'm balanced, right? You don't get this in Malaysia, sad to say, Malaysian uh, brokerages, okay? So that, that's how sophisticated interactive brokers is. And this is a trusted broker that has been, you know, they're even listed in the market. They've been around for a long, long time. So I like, I like my money there. Right, 194,000 USD is like close to 800,000 ringgit. So yeah, I like my money there, right? So let's talk about fundamentals a little bit, guys. Okay, uh, by the way, I got a question. Who here, and I asked this at the beginning of the slide, right? Uh, beginning of the session. Who here is more of the FA investor? FA meaning the fundamental analysis investor. Are you guys investors? Are you guys traders? Anyone here? Kawi says FA, awesome. Anyone else? Technical and FA, wow. Th that is the best. We're gonna talk about why FA is the best, FATA is the best later, but okay, FA mostly, awesome, awesome. Uh, not a lot of people saying FA, but I assume, I don't know. I, I don't know what to assume, right? Just, just let me know, right? Let me know who you are and uh, what do you do because I can actually sort of help you better. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about building a bullish thesis. Right? That's why, sorry, that's why you see that, you know, this crazy woman milking a cow. But yeah, end of the day, <laughs> that's what it means. Bullish means up, right? So we want to be milking the cow on our companies, right? Milking the stocks in our companies. We want to be bu building that bullish thesis, yeah? So let's look at a macro holistic point of view. And this is what we exactly preach in Academy. When we want to look at a particular, you know, sector or stock before we put our money in our investments to sharpen our thesis, to be milking it better, we look at the macro high level view, right? When I talk about that, I talk about market opportunity. What is the core TAM? The core total addressable markets, right? And it's in layers, right? So there's, you're either a top down investor or a bottoms up approach guy, right? Person. I personally am more on bottoms up. That means I focus on the core first before going up to the sector. But then again, these are the layers, right? Then we look at where do they belong in the value supply chain? Then only we dig into the interesting stuff, right? The core, the qualitative sense, the quantitative sense, yeah? So yeah, again, this is top down. And when we talk about macro high level, we talk about global local economic status. We talk about, is it in a thriving sector overall? It's not a sunset industry, right? I foresee, you know, millennials, Gen Z, when they come out, they will be going lesser and lesser on energy related stocks because they're dying, oil and gas specifically. Right, I mean, more specifically, it's oil and gas because it's getting replaced, it's getting disrupted. So, should we be holding this for our kids? No, not really. Right, <laughs> this is this is an example. And improving ways of consumption trend is it within that sector? Does it have growth catalysts for us to propel forward? Right, overall outlook to gauge the terminal value. How long do we think that this sector will grow? And I'm talking about solar, renewable energy, EV. There's so many, right, guys? There's so many for us to pick. All we got to do is just, you know, get it within our competence and select, yeah? So then we move on to value supply chain where, okay, we understand the position they are in, you know, within that chain. Are they downstream players, upstream players, midstream players, right? Because each chain, there's benefits in relation to 
let's say, you know, they depend on commodity prices, let's say, right? Oil and gas prices, right? So competitors and penetration, how strong are they against other competitors? Yeah. And understanding how sector rotation works because, you know, just a quick example, uh, February 2021, March and May 2021, tech cycle went down like mad. So whenever a cycle goes down, what goes up, right? Real estate went up, building materials went up, energy went up. So this is what we can be as, a better, as better investors. We can actually learn on how we can, you know, sorry, capitalize on sector rotation so that we can be, you know, strategizing and hedging our portfolios. Yep. And, um, and obviously we go to the fun stuff, which is the fundamentals, right? The qualitative, the quantitative, uh, earnings projection, right? Determine valuations that we want on the five-year time frame or whenever your terminal value is. This is what we do. Yep, this is what we do. So Steve says, jumping on a bandwagon investor. Okay, that's great. That's great. So knowing where the company stands in the market and value chain sharpens our thesis. Guys, you'll be very surprised. I, I teach this stuff to like working class individuals, okay? People don't even do this. They don't even factor this in. We should be doing this to have a sharper thesis, right? So that we are lesser and lesser making that, you know, the margin of safety better, that cushion better, the foundation better, and we're not gambling, right? That's... Huge key. So it gives indication of holding period. End of the day, we build convictions, right? Whether or should, we should buy more or we should sell, these are all our convictions, okay? So companies that I will personally pump, I didn't want to put this, but you know, just sharing with you guys, don't, please, please don't follow me, okay? Companies that I will personally pump in is regardless of market swings, Tesla, Square, Palantir. You want to know more? Talk to us, right? Talk to us. And we got a bottoms up approach, obviously. We start from the core all the way up. Yep, so there's, you know, sort of two types of investors. And looking deeper down, right, looking at a bullish thesis where we touch on the core, we will, you know, we will stress on doing our courses, right? We will stress on thorough understanding of the business model. Yep, we will touch on, uh, and how we work, by the way. A lot of people, especially like, you know, the numbers people, and this is something that I've learned over the years. I used to be the guy that, okay, I look at their debt. If it's high debt, I'm out. No. Please, okay, guys, please do not do that. We'll be missing on the Teslas of the world. We'll be missing on the PayPal's of the world 10 years ago. We'll be missing out on Ebay's, right? Squares, planters. Honestly, guys, I, I learned my lesson. I've been in the market for quite some time, right? Do not go down that road. Yeah, do not go down a road when you just see financials and you're out. Look at the qualitative analysis. This is what I believe for Academy Specialty is. We look at like a think like a business owner mindset. Yep. Thorough understanding of the business model. Then only we go to the financials. Qualitative, then qualitative, quantitative. Yep. Look at the competition because again, this is some people do not do not do. Yep. Then only we determine the valuations, the intrinsic valuation or the valuation that they deserve five years later or 10 years later, depending on how long you want to hold them. Yep. To come up with projections to build solid buy and sell plans. Yep. So think as though you're owning a piece of the business. That's the mindset. And ask yourself, is this a sound investment? Right? It's not just investment because Warren says so, because Warren Buffett says so, Jimmy Buffett says so, whatever the Buffett says so, right? These are things that we should build convictions ourselves before we even place our hard-earned money, right? I know some of you guys are rich, which is fine. I'm just kidding. But before we even buy a stock, before we even sell a stock, these are buy and sell plans. Okay? So just, uh, do we have time? You know, 46. So just to touch up, you know, a little bit on a growth company, bullish thesis, some factors of what I look at. Uh, you know, I segregate my plays five to 10 years or more. Seriously, five to 10 years or more. I got two kids. I'm a breadwinner. I think for them, and I think about my investments, but I strategize, right? So I have a balanced portfolio of 70-30, my 70-30 rule. 30 is on thematic play, short-term trading, and I can capitalize that on with my partner because he's a trading expert. And 70% are like my hold for long stocks, right? So this is my five to 10 years play. And what do I look at when I look at high quality growth? I want to share them today, okay? <clears throat> high quality growth stocks, strong aspects on product market fit. Are they really solving a problem that is worth it? A lot of people, they just look at, okay, the news says that Palantir is an awesome company. Okay, I want to invest. Come on. Seriously, come on. Okay. <laughs> Are you reading them enough? Right? Are you going through the 10Ks, looking at the websites, looking at demo day, actually researching how they even work? Right? Are they solving a huge problem? That is key. Okay. Number two is aggressive management. Whether we like it or not, companies are run by management, right? The reason why I've been holding 
Tesla, ever since they were lo- I was losing on a 35 to 50% in my portfolio all the way until today to a thousand percent is because of Elon Musk, right? Obviously, everything that, is, that he's been preaching, he's been backing. Guys, aggressive management. And I can go on all day. I can talk about Tim Houston, right? Glenn, Glenn Kellerman, right? Redfin CEO. We need aggressive management, yeah? Scalable. Are their products scalable? Are their companies scalable, right? Are they addressing multiple total addressable markets? Quick, you know, quick analogy on Tesla. They're not just a car company. Those, those idiots, sorry. Sorry to say, right? That say that Tesla is just a car company. They want to be assessing, like comparing with Ford, comparing with Toyota. Come on, guys. Come on. A lot of financial gurus out there, they, 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 look, at the, they look at Tesla, they look at the financials. Okay, I'm out. Come on. Guys, seriously, right? I, I don't want to be hyping up the stock too much, but we look at what they have to offer, right? We look at, are they disrupting something good, right? We look at product market fit. We look at how are they going, seriously, how many cars will be EV if let's say battery production can compete? How many cars are going to be EV 10 years later, guys? Come on. Okay, that's a huge fact. And how many percent do we think that Tesla can grab that market share? That's all it is. Right, guys? So hopefully you guys got some value out of that today. Uh, but this is what I mean. Right? This is what I mean by capturing multiple times. Not only EV cars. That's like the main core business, bread and butter. Aside from that, robotaxi, AI. Right? They can be their own insurance company based on robotaxi. They are solar. They're renewable energy company. Come on. Right? The list goes on and on. Right? So they're capturing multiple TAMs, multiple new revenue streams. The companies that you guys are investing in, do they have that? That's the ultimate question. Right? So be equipped with investors' criteria because this is what Academy does. You know, we coach people on this. That's what we do. And there you have it. The future is faster than you think. Read this book, guys. Who here likes reading books? Okay? It's a, you know... There's a book for you. How Converging Technologies Are Transforming Businesses is not just on, oh, you know, numbers, they just know. It's all about understanding the market, what is happening in the future, right? All these things. So just to be uh, sharing with you guys, oh, it's 11.50. Just to be sharing with you guys, <clears throat> in Academy, we recently had a workshop, right? It's called Beating the Odds, okay? The beating the Odds. And the question is, are we beating the odds in our life, in our portfolios, in our net worth? Because, I mean, not flexing and all, but this is what we do. Right? We are managing a seven-figure portfolio individually. Yeah? And you know, if you follow us on Stockbit, <clears throat> we actually did a post. Right? And all of our posts, our analysis, we do for free. I mean, not all. Obviously, we keep some because we have our membership, we have our group. But we did a post on sharing and we were really happy because when we, when I, when we started this business two years ago for Academy, uh, don't get me wrong, I've been investing for seven years right now. Investing, right? I've been gambling 10, 12 years ago, but really investing seven years ago, right? So we were happy because we decided when we, you know, went on this journey of being full-time, we thought that, okay, you know what? We need to have a public portfolio for people to see, right? We need a public portfolio for people to see our returns, what we do, what do we preach, our analysis. So we started off with 10,000 ringgit. The strategy right here, guys, and I want to, and I want to stress this like really, you know, the strategy right here, the bigger mindset is that we earn our money from our side hustles, from our nine to five, from our own business, from our rental, whatever it is, we have the mindset to know that we have to save our money. And how do we compound our wealth, guys? We invest that money. Where do we invest in? Out of a scale of one to five, stocks to grow our net worth, for me, is like a 5.5, right? So you got to ask yourself that question. On a scale of one to five, what is, you know, I mean, you can answer it right now. Scale of one to five, five being the most, what is your conviction that the stock can propel drastically your net worth, right? Let me know in the chats, yeah? So I did reveal this, okay? I wrote it up. I shared that building a 530,000 growth portfolio from scratch. We started with 10,000. We've been earning our money, saving our money, reinvesting that money. So that's key. That's the ultimate goal, right? So we, we were very fortunate because the stock market was on steroids in 2020. In one year and two months, we actually grew that, you know, I, I posted this is November 2020, right? 530,000 ringgit. Um, that, that's a breakdown. You can check it out in Stockbit, right? But I want to tell you guys that this is not a dream or it's not too good to be true. 
it's not a scam, guys. It's real money. We, we are transparent. We even take snapshots of what we, you know, what it says in IBKR. It's a result of hard work, okay? Please take note that we do not encourage quick, get-rich-quick schemes, right? We do not encourage that, yeah? <clears throat> so why are we doing this, right? We show progress of our own investing returns. We are accountable, right? Everything that we post, we can back it up. We walk the talk, guys. If it goes down, we'll face it. We made wrong predictions and we got fired some for, you know, from some of our members for SCIB, Gay Power. But oh, what can we do when management is sort of effing everything up, right? Anyway, not going too detailed about that. But yeah, be accountable and responsible for the moves that we make. We look at the bigger picture, guys. We work backwards. What is your FU money? What is your fuck you money, right? What is FU money? Retirement money. Money that you want in the bank to say F you to your boss. That's the concept, right? So how much is that? 5 million, 10 million? We work backwards to say that, okay, how do we get there? What is the plan? Fun fact, you put in 20,000 ringgit, right? 20% per annum, KGAR, return of investment. If you are doing that consistently and putting in the account, 1,005 every month, you will get to seven figures in 15 years. That's what it is, compounding. Right? So that's what we do. And it's very achievable, guys. It's very, very achievable. If I can do it, you can do it too. Right? So this growth is exponential, it's compounded. Yeah? And this was a snapshot back in uh, you know, November 2020. Snapshot that the NAV, the net asset value of this public account was 126,000 USD. Fast forward to today, it's 194,000. So why is that? Why is it so fast? Because it's compounding, right? So yeah, I mean, Abby Kara messaged me, right? Happy anniversary because I opened this account since September 27th. And this is where we started off with our 10,000 ringgit. Yeah. So the question is, are you, are you building home runs for your future? We built on Tesla, Square, Stratasys, Redfin, the list goes on, right? What is your net, next 10x stock, right? It, people say that, oh, you know what? There's so many gurus coming out now, right? So many fucking gurus um, uh, is luck, right? The stock market is going up, so many gurus coming out. But seriously, is it a result of luck? Or is it a result of proper analysis before we buy? Because we don't depend on luck, guys. We depend on facts and figures, right? Analysis driven, everything that we preach just now, that's what we do before we buy. When the NAV dropped to 144,000 on May, we were noisy as hell. We were noisy as hell to say that, guys, this is the time to capitalize on, you know, opportunities, on dips. I hope you guys are doing that too. Okay, so this is what we do. And this is a snapshot on Excel, right? Why is that Excel? Because I've got a combination of, you know, Malaysian companies, US companies, Malaysia, you know, the brokerage is not as sophisticated as US to show data. So we have to compile an Excel and we're actually managing a seven-figure portfolio, right? Ever since we started, we grew that 200%. Investing, reinvesting, saving money, growing the net worth. Combination of TA and FA, okay? So this is what it is. And this is a snapshot of, you know, the NAV of the account, 823,000 ringgit. In one year, our performance was 120% compared to the S&P of 30%, 32% and ARK Invest of 49%. You have no idea how happy I am when, I'm, you know, when, I, when I see that I'm trashing ARK Invest one year ago. Yeah, that's, that's how happy I am, right? <laughs> we should celebrate that. If you are doing that, like, tell that to someone, right? Share your story. You know, share your story because we believe that people do not have to invest alone. We need to be in a community. Right, we need to trade together, strengthen the community, right? Stronger together. Yeah. And this is a snapshot of, you know, um an account under my wife's name. We're actually getting 79% up. And this is actually based on FA, right? So US is based on FA. This is based on FA. Um uh yeah, it's uh we, we increased that amount from hundred thousand, we grew to 182,000, right? But this is the TA where my partner is in charge of, right? Fit, you there? Yo, you yes. Me? Yo, you want to tell them a bit about, you know, the trader public account? Can, can. Uh, can I share my screen? Awesome. Sure, let me stop. All right. Okay, guys. Oh, by the way, I haven't opened my camera yet. Okay. So, um, my name is Shafi. I'm a FY trader. I'm a full-time trader since I'm graduate. Uh, not exactly since graduate, like two years after graduate. But I've um, been full-time trader since then, right? And all right, in Factory, what important is we really combine the best of both worlds, FATA, right? Fundamental analysis and technical analysis. But we are not, we're not, uh, we don't have just like a specific, we don't have like 
one kind of strategy only, right? We go in any, uh, we attack in any way that we can. You know what I mean? So uh, in trading, right? Uh, there's a counter that we're not really looking at the fundamental. There's a counter that we really look at the fundamental, fundamental, right? So, I mean, we versatile in our strategy, and this is what we do. And uh, what you see here is our Discord, right? So, uh, this is what uh, we have in our members, lah. We discuss about market. We discuss what happened in in the market or not. Sharing our analysis together, right? Uh, sharing our watch list and whatnot. But what I really want to show here is how we do analysis, right? And how we trade because that is uh, to answer Warren's question how we get that 59%, right? Uh, year to date, okay? So um, we have our analysis, what we call as FY analysis. So, um, and we update this like, you know, we not just, um, we not just uh, share our analysis and leave it there, right? If you're really serious with this trade, right, we will keep this in our analysis thesis and we update every week, right? Well, whether uh, we sh should we go out, should we go in again? We update this every, every day, not every day, lah, right? Every time it's showing a good movement, right? So this is basically our uh, example of thesis, right? So this example of thesis is consists of three important things that if you want to really know how to properly understand, right? Your technical uh, analysis reason, right? You need to have a, a thesis like this, right? You need to know your empirical uh, reason. You need to know your uh, theoretical reason, right? And you also need to uh, to have a psychological pain that you control for your own portfolio. So this is what we have, right? We're not saying to our committee, right? Right. So we sharing JSM by JSM. No, we are sharing what we see, okay? And from what we see, what we expect to see based on theory, theory in technical analysis, and our own personal video, which is okay. I currently. Uh, I currently have a 5% of uh, cushion of profit, right? So I take this as what, what, what. So that basically we sharing our psychological pain, how we manage the portfolio, right? And um, how we do this, right? How we do our technical analysis, right? Um, because today is about US market, right? So I want to bring up, uh, bring this Dropbox, okay? Um, this is one of, uh, yeah, Dropbox is one of the, counter that uh, Warren is really bullish at the moment, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. But now I want to show you what is empirical, what is theoretical and psychological pain in short manner, right? Okay, so, um, you know, theoretically, right, what we see in, um, what we can see in Dropbox is actually forming a rounding bottom, okay? So, in forming a rounding bottom means that you have a, it have theoretically right it will test the resistance here right all time high resistance okay so that's fair enough that's number one okay so it will test this high resistance but in any running bottom right you need to have a downward a downtrend right so here is our downtrend then we have a, like a collection area here okay Right. So this is like accumulation area, right? Um, preliminary support, uh, uh, berry stop, put back, uh, up, uh, yeah, this is spring and whatnot, right? So we have this and we have the uptrend again, okay? So this uptrend, right? Um, this is just the whole new uptrend, right? But now I want to bring to the next theory, which is we say that, right? If this is really an uptrend move, right? If this is really an uptrend wave, right? What is the current phase of the wave, right? This is according to Elliott Wave's uh, understanding, right? So we have wave one, wave two, and currently forming wave three, right? And yeah, this is just not happened yet, lah, right? But now it's still on wave three, okay? And probably it's not yet finished the wave three in weekly chart, right? Because the price still maintain above the trend, right? But provided if it break the trend, right? Then we can consider that, right? 
probably the wave four already start. And by theory, um, wave four, right, will drop. Okay, by theory, wave four will drop um, two point three six, right? So when the price do a retracement like this, right, we can consider to see potential buy, right? Uh, around this area, buy on deep. Okay, so where's the target price could be, right? We can target all time high just now, right? And by theory also, right? If the price manage to break the all time high, uh, perfecting the rounding bottom, okay? We can assume that the price, the next target price is this much, right? Because this is by theory, Right, if the price break the accumulation on the bottom, it can go uh, from peak low and peak high. Right, so this is, and in fact, right, this is um, still within fundamental valuation. Right, so that is the goodness of FATA, right, combining fundamental and technical. So it gives us more confidence. Right, at the end of the day, right, um, we can also utilize or really make use of our technical knowledge to know when is the perfect time to buy back and whatnot right so i think that's all for from me Warren. back to you awesome awesome so let me share my screen back yeah so that's the power of fata guys establish the cushion establish the foundation of that particular company guys again do your own fdd right <laughs> Uh, do not just buy Dropbox, <laughs> but I'm very bullish on Dropbox. I had, I re we recently had a Dropbox workshop, right? I think like last week. Um, yeah, so do follow us and do comment. I think Ping is able to share the recording. If you just comment Dropbox on, um, or just messages, right? Just let us know. Then we'll be having, uh, giving an access. <clears throat> But we did a, a workshop on Dropbox. We did, you know, we discovered the fundamentals. We discovered we are really bullish on the company, especially updating the recent earnings call. So we combined, you know, TA because my thesis was that the greedy is, the, the market is greedy. When the market is greedy, what do we do, right? We don't just, you know, we based on our thesis, we based on our educated guess that we don't jump, jump in straight away. We wait for dips, right? We wait for corrections and TA actually backed that up, right? It sharpened the thesis that, okay, maybe there's going to be a fallback before it goes up again. So, and especially when the Elliott wave number four was up, it's still within that range, within that valuation range that we deem is fair for the years to come. Yep. So just want, we just want to share with you guys, you know, our members are on track on beating the odds, right? They are on track on thesis building. They know they are independent on how to build, you know, a bullish thesis, bearish thesis, whatever it is. Their returns are on track. I think just yesterday, and we do FB lives every week. Yep. We will be more active in YouTube. Do subscribe to that. Uh, yesterday, we revealed that a member of ours, Zakia, right? She made a Lagenda uh, Warren trade. That was amazing. Like, I think it was close to 50% in... I don't know how long, um, but what I'm trying to say is that these are the sort of returns that she's independent right now, right? She attended, you know, empowerment courses and now she's independent. That, that is what we want. That's why we are empowering, right? So we, um, you know, they're building, uh, they're on track to identify risks in the market, yep, in stocks, in companies. Uh, they are on track to, you know, for, for portfolio management. They're very mindful right now. Political case, you know, they're just going to be choose uh, selective, right? Not choosy, um, not being exposing the risk. Sorry? Conservative, yeah. Conservative, yeah. So understand, the most important thing when it comes to FA investing, understanding of the businesses, right? Solid understanding of the businesses because at the end of the day, right? We're not investing ticker symbols. We're not investing in stocks. We want to know more about the business before we, you know, we, we put our hard-earned money. So this is what we mean by empowering, right? They're on track to be beating the odds. And this is just a little bit of what, you know, very kind of uh, our members to say, like, join this course, really fruitful and learn about how to analyze businesses by looking more into business, the numbers, understanding the details. Uh, price is cheaper compared to many courses out there. And the most important thing is I learn more compared to others, right? It's 10 out of 10. And we're really thankful for Dylan for saying that. Um, and we got, you know, Krisan Babu. Uh, can we change the way, you know, of thinking regarding investing also about business? Because if you want to learn and understand every detail about the business, you know, he says, join Academy, right? And um, yeah, I'm really thankful for him, right? You'll regret it if you miss the opportunity to learn from Coach Warren. So what I'm trying to say is that we have that sort of special source to, you know, look at companies in a way that people don't even do, right? Think, have that, think like a business owner mindset. This is what we do, yeah? Um, so just to share with you guys, we have courses, right? We have modules, basically it's empowerment or exclusive. And um, yeah, empowerment is just, we provide courses and exclusive is just being in a group. Yeah, this is just the gist of it. 
Uh, <clears throat> so just to conclude this a bit about us, I I found a platform called for Academy two years ago, right? We, it's an establishment to set to you know empower people. Uh, now I'm a full time private investor. I'm also a full time you know I have a diversified asset portfolio, properties, stocks private businesses. The key thing here is that, you know, for our private businesses, we apply those methods to our strategies in stocks. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm also coaching international people. I'm also coaching US people. I'm on contract with a US company. I'm actually talking to a lot, right? A lot of people from Italy, Kuwait, Israel, you know, US, UK. So, you know, we get, we're, we're spreading, we are spreading our branding there and actually people are finding more value in the academy, right? So I'm more than, you know, seven, eight years of experience in the stock market. Our focus is on growth stocks, okay? Obscure growth stocks. Uh, obviously, we're managing a seven-figure seven figure portfolio and we manage a seven, uh, family office, yep. Uh, the, the public account to date is around 500 to 600%, right? Two years ago, yep. So a little bit about you, Fig. Fig, you there? Right. Okay, my partner um, seems to be, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Hello, all right, sorry. I'm yeah, a little about you. Okay. So I'm full-time trader. I've been five years in the market, right? And yeah, I've been with Academy since last year, right? Uh, as a private business. But I also, um, uh, I might focus in the market. I've been following analyst call, following uh, investor uh, briefing and whatnot, right? And yeah, I've also managed my six figures portfolio, right? And we, I'm, I got around seven to 15% monthly average. This is, um, each year, right? So for this year, we are currently at standing at 9% monthly average, which is still con considered uh, good because market is downward in Malaysia market, right? So yeah, I also recognize as one of the chartist, top chartists in Stop Big community, and I have my own uh, own live session, right? In Stop Big called Technical Tuesday. You can watch, a, watch us Technical Tuesday every Tuesday. And yeah, I think that's all. Awesome. So, you know, there'll be a link in the chats. Uh, the link is actually directly to the, uh, if you want to know more about us, know more about, you know, I mean, you know, pricing and whatnot, you can actually check in there. I'm not allowed to reveal it here, but check out that, that link. Uh, is, you get to know more about us. Um, you can, you know, obviously we want to empower people and we, we even, you know, want to empower more for students. So we're actually giving that access, right? Getting greater access, better entry. Yeah, this is, you know, this is what we do. And don't forget to follow us on all our pages if you can, uh, and you want to update more. Yeah. So awesome. Hope you, hopefully you guys got some value today.